Hello, everybody out there in YouTube. We are the Middle Age Guys, and we are coming back to you with another edition of what we've played this week. Let me get all the introductions out of the way. I am the Reverend. The theme here. And I'm Grey Mouse One. Just like usual, our favorite hobby in all the world is playing video games. We're participating in the industry and everything else. And with that, every week we go ahead and we summarize the games we actually have a chance to go ahead and partake of because as middle-aged guys, we don't always get the chance to you know, partake in our most favorite hobby in all the world. Uh, none of these are going to be full reviews or anything like that. And like always, and like I say at the end of every one of these videos, if there happens to be a game that you want any of us to go ahead and check out or talk about, uh, feel free to leave it in the comment below. All right. With that said, how many games do we have in front of us this week, guys? I know I've got four physical copies, but really I'm going to be talking about five games. What about y'all? I have five. I have the same thing. Four physical and one digital. Okay. Well, um, let me go ahead and let me start out. Uh, Grey Mouse, actually, you're going to help me with the, with the show and tell here. Uh, one of the games that I, I'm playing this week is actually Tecmo Secret of the Stars. Uh, Grey Mouse has a physical copy right there. I'm playing it on emulation. Um, this is the problem with emulation, folks. And I know a lot of you, a lot of the quote-unquote hardcore gamers out there are like, well, why don't you just go ahead and make yourself a Raspberry Pi and drop all the ROMs on them? Because <laughs> it's not the same as actually owning the fucking games, okay? No. And if you're as obsessive about this stuff as I am, when it comes to actually playing the games on actual hardware and everything else, there is something very specific to that particular experience, okay? Uh, nonetheless, you're just gonna have to you're just gonna have to call me Blackbeard here for for this particular segment. All right, <laughs> um, I've been playing it on my my modded uh, SNES, uh, Tecmo Secret of the Stars, Ooh. and yes, it is a JRPG. Yes, it is grindy, but my God, I don't, I have not run into a game that is so. It is so ov overtly grindy as this fucking game. Hmm. Literally, when you find another person who, to actually help you out, he does not join your party. Instead, he ends up saying, I'm an alternate person who will go ahead and run around and do things, you know, if you're not able to. Uh, guess <laughs> what? You still have to level him up. So literally, you have to <laughs> spend twice as much time to go ahead and grind. Now, if they were in the same party... Guess what? They would share the experience and they would all level up all together. But no, by the time I go ahead and I, I pass the first area, this motherfucker is still third fucking level. Really? <laughs> then I got to go ahead and I got to I I got to sit there and now grind in the brand new area where everybody's like level eight and they're just killing him by farting in his fucking direction, <laughs> uh, you know, to go ahead and and, and play through. <laughs> I am going to give it some more time and to play through on that to see whether or not I'm going to continue going all the way through it or move on to uh, uh, Lufia, uh, which the first Lufia on the SNES, which I have a physical copy of. Hell right? yeah. So that's the first game that, that I, I'm going to talk about this particular week. Everything else, um, except, for, except for one title, is going to be a continuation of other games that I've continued playing on. Guys, who's going to go next? I will. Uh, I don't know why Genesis games were like this at the beginning of their stages of um, not having the titles of the games on the front and have them on top I, I, and only on top. I couldn't really understand that. Well, it's better than Nintendo having just Jellico on top of it when you were talking. But but anyway, I'm not sure if you guys will recognize this. Um, Is that the first Streets of Rage or Streets of Rage 2? It's 2. It's 2. <sighs> I knew it was a Streets of Rage game. <laughs> yeah. Talk about one of the best beat-em-ups of all time. This is one of them. Period. Um, love this game. Love the beat-em-up. Uh, so Streets of Rage 4 is coming. So I'm like, all right, let me try to get in, back into this. One and two I'll play. I'll skip three. And I'll play some Streets of Rage remake. <laughs> but... Great beat-em-up, love beat-em-ups. This is one of the best of all time. Grey Mouse, you're up. 
Um, one thing that you forgot to mention is the uh, the fucking soundtrack on those games. Oh yeah. In yeah. fact, the soundtrack, especially for Genesis of the you know Sega knew how to right. operate. Right. And the thing is, is uh, my when I do put up videos, my ending songs are <laughs> and that, that's how much I love enjoy that game. All right, so for on to me, um, I got a game that uh, that you could actually play. Um, on a, it's a board game. You could actually play a uh, play it on the board, you know, physically in front of you. Now, when the team and I were in the Navy, we've mentioned this several times before. We had all-out war on this on this board. We <laughs> stayed up all night, most of the time, um, um, playing this damn game. So, um, and in fact, I was kind of surprised that he played, to be quite honest with you. And I'm pretty sure that he was uh, just as surprised as me. And we're nerds, so of course we played. The game that we are talking about is, um, I was playing, uh, if it will focus, uh, Chess Chess Master. Master. Mm -hmm. No matter if this is on the computer, on the, um, I think it was on the NES as well, on pretty much every system. SNES, yeah. Um, or an SNES, rather. This is one of those games that you cannot get enough of, in my opinion. Um, it, let, it, it teaches you how to critically think and trying to get your, uh, I think it's your um, your rating up above 800 and and playing against the, uh, the, the computer. And also what's so good about Chess Master is the fact that you could actually play against Real life chess masters as a computer, and you could actually put your wits against mm-hmm. a real life that once lived, sometimes even back ages ago, that they played chess, and it, and you could actually play the games that they played, and you could do a lot of practice. And this game, I love this game. It's it's great, chess masters, absolutely, man. Damn, you mentioning all that time, all the wars that we went through when we were in the Navy, that does take me back. <laughs> because Grey Mouse 1, he had a marble chess set, and oh my God, we used to just tear it up. Just tear it up. Cool. He said marble, not the Zelda one, by the way. I'm no, no, I wish. I wish. That would have been more <laughs> awesome. And F you for you thinking that I didn't know what the freaking do <laughs> in chess when you first know, saw, when you first challenged me. <laughs> F you for that. <laughs> I I can make a very uh, inappropriate joke, but I'm going to save that for some time later when we're all face to face. Um, so, uh, continuing on with the games that we played this week, um, this is the only other uh, brand new game to the list, or Newer game to list. Everything else I'm going to mention after this is stuff that I've continued to play from the previous weeks and everything else. But like I had noted last week, um, the NES, excuse me, the Switch online service and everything that went on uh, went up last week, you know, and they've got NES games. I sat there, I checked in today, um, actually a few days ago, and I was uh, messing around with one particular uh, game in, in, one particular game for for a while. And it also really kind of kicked off some of the shortcomings, you know, firsthand, like the experience of like playing some of those NES games on the Switch, uh, you know, for the service and everything. And the game that I was playing is a classic, Gradius. Wow. Okay. You see, uh, the thing about Gradius is that it's a great shooter and everything else. And um, the problem, though, is that if you're playing with... Uh, you know, the standard Joy-Con controllers. Um, this is what the D-pad looks like on the left-hand side, okay? Yeah. Now, you could either use that or you could use the analog stick. The uh-huh. problem with the analog stick, though, is that if you start using the analog <laughs> stick, um, the control, the directional control starts feeling floaty because it doesn't let go when you feel like it should let go, okay? Right. Now, the problem with the directional buttons is that because it doesn't have that rocker in the middle, literally you have to sit there and and be conscious of where your thumb is. Otherwise, you may be pressing more than one one button down. And then just moving from literally 
top to bottom, you have to remove your thumb and then move it from top to bottom, also from left to right and, and vice versa. Um, so just as just as as a suggestion, all right, if you're somebody who's got the Switch online service um, and you're playing any of the NES games, I do suggest something with a real D-pad because then the actual control isn't so much of an issue because, yeah, when I was sitting there, I was playing Gradius, and instead of just going down, I was going down left a, a large majority of the time. It, it really started bugging me. Then I was like, oh, hey, the analog stick works. But because the analog stick, you know, the yeah. dead zone on the on the analog stick is actually really, really small on the, on the Joy-Cons. Um, it, because of that, it doesn't release that direction as as quickly as you as you think it should if you're using a, a digital D-pad, and it makes all of the directional input really really floaty. It'll right. continue on in that for just a small like a few frames or so. And when you're playing something that that requires like twitch reflexes and stuff like that, it becomes a detriment. Okay, um, so yeah. Uh, you know, other than that, it was Gradius, sounded, looked, you know, like Gradius and everything else. But, yeah, there's just no way I'm I'm going to be playing it on the, on the Switch, you know, NES online and everything else without a D-pad. It's just, it's not going to fucking happen. And, and I know so, why. So, wait a minute. Could you use all your, uh, any of your other controllers for that? I can, if I... If I sync up the one of my eight bit Dell controllers for it, I can use that. That's fine, and everything else. I thought you could. That, isn't there a way you can use your Wii U controllers? Um, the Wii U controller for the for the for the Switch, no, no. All right, yeah. I can sync up the eight bit Dell controllers, but I can't sync up, sync up the Wii motes or anything else like that. And then use yeah. like yeah, I can sync up one of those. In fact, I do mm-hmm. have one of those synced up to it to go ahead. And and work on that. The problem yeah. with those is that if you happen to have like just a standard SF SF30 or SN30 um, uh, controllers or the or the N30 or or F30 controllers and not the Pro controllers, you see the the Pro controller, the other one that you had in your hand, that's the 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 SN30. All right, so that's the Pro controller. That's the 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 FC30 Pro controller. If you look on it. It has a second set of shoulder buttons. It has a ZL and ZR. Yes, that one will, If you don't have the ZL ZR, you can't you can't exit out to the menu. Oh, so on the, the so NES. So are out. Yeah, so those are out. The regular uh the the regular uh Super Nintendo or or Famicom 30 uh uh Super Famicom ones, they they don't work. The Pro controllers with the extra ZL ZR. Yeah, so it's either one of these two. Yeah. Or, yeah, or the newer ones which have the the right. that has the the, uh, the ZLZR mm. because without it you can't nev- navigate out. Um, even if you even with the ones that have a home mm. button, it do- it doesn't work that way with the uh, NES online. Ow. That yeah. Hurts. So, just a public service announcement to anybody who's thinking about you know playing the NES games online on the Switch. So All right. One of these. Yeah, mm. something like that. Mm-hmm. One of the pro controllers because they have the ZLZR. Famicom one, yes. That, yes, that. Yep. Wow. Okay, right. that's good to know because I sure would have gotten a Switch and tried this. and It wouldn't work. It wouldn't no. work. All right. All right. I'm going to continue with the Genesis here. Hmm. Altered Beast. Altered Beast. Beast. Ooh, wow. Love this game. Love this game in the arcade when Sega was in their heyday, you know, in the 80s. And yes, it's it qualifies as a beat 'em up, but it's a quest type of game where you're going and wait, you were dead. Someone commands you to rise from your grave and you, you have to go save. I'm like, wait a minute, you can you have the power to raise the dead and you just can't go get this girl. You're, you can't go get your daughter yourself. Anyway. <laughs> Rise from your grave. Rise from your grave. Damn, do I have to? What's that peril here that you got to bring me back to life in order to fucking get something? But great game all the way through, all the way around. Love it. Love changing the beasts and using powers and stuff like that. Turning the dragons and bears and 
yeah, just all around a great game, especially for the first generation Genesis, um, like launch titles and things like that. Gray Mouse, you're up. So uh, have you guys ever heard of uh, chain gaming? You know, you finish a game and then you're like, uh, I got to play the next game and then I got to play another next game and I got to play the next game all in succession. Yeah. So yeah. pretty much uh, this is what happened. Um, I do have uh, a Nintendo Online, Nintendo Live, and um, I started playing uh, baseball. You know, just original uh, NES baseball. Nintendo baseball. <laughs> wow. Yes. I played the hell out of that. Where you couldn't so, control your freaking outfielders. <laughs> you can, but more, yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, I was playing that. Then that got me thinking. I was like, you know what? I think I have a better baseball game. So the baseball game that um, that I have, this is not really, it does have a seal of approval of Nintendo, but it's it's still a, a, a tension game. Um, the game that I'm talking about is RBI, RBI. baseball. RBI. Yeah. RBI. And, uh, I'm not I'm not really a uh, uh, a modern sports game uh, player, but I sure the hell will play some old school sports games. And this I've spent hours and days and just just because I think this you know this one you could actually. Uh, do your whole season thing, and then you could actually play your uh, whole 160 games, and you could actually build your characters. So by the end of the – when it's time for the, uh, the, the the end of the season and whatnot, you know, you have your, your batters batting 800, you know, and your pitchers hmm. uh, ERA at 0, 0. 0.1, you know, and stuff like that. It's just – this is a, a, a Nintendo classic. It definitely is a Nintendo classic. Even Nintendo Baseball is a Nintendo Classic game. Um, but, yeah, growing up playing this and just going back and playing it, you know, as a middle-aged guy, brought back a lot of memories. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I, I don't have the time to play a full season on this anymore. But, you know, it's, it's just, yeah, it was fun. I had to put this in. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. Like I said, uh, uh, when I was talking about Gradius, uh, the games that I'm going to continue talking about now are games that I have been playing over the last few weeks and I have continued through. Um, I I went ahead, the two games that I, that I lost got for the Switch, I went ahead and mm-hmm. I spent some time on each. Uh, Blade Strangers, of course, you know, going ahead and just uh, going through and choosing uh, random characters so that I could unlock other characters. Um of the of the roster, there's like twelve uh, selectable characters right off the bat, and then there are four characters that you can unlock by playing through what, uh, the, the regular story mode with the other ones. I think I've only unlocked two of them: uh, Shovel Knight and um, uh, Striker Gunvolt. Those are the two characters that I, I've unlocked. Uh, the other ones, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go through and play through the other characters so that I can actually go ahead and unlock them through. Like I said, this one is a is a fighting game, but it's very simplified as far as the um, game mechanics and everything goes. And it's made up of all of the Nicolas characters, you know, characters from Cave Story, uh, uh, I assume Kawase, uh, Blade Strangers, well, Blade Strangers is the game. Um, what is it? Coda Princess EX, and other ones. Uh, one of the characters that does make a guest starring appearance is Shovel Knight, and mm. the way that they go ahead and they actually the design that they make make him out, you know, outside of just the eight bit sprite and everything else as a fighting gar- game character, he is actually probably one of the coolest looking fighting game characters on here. So, um, yeah, so I continue playing through that, not as much as I continue playing through uh, SNK Heroines. Like I said, unfortunately. Uh, when you get through the game and you've gone through like the first few, you're like, oh, this is what the particular experience is. And then you find out the cutscenes and everything between rounds depends on what your two characters are and that they have specific cutscenes for the beginning of the, of the arcade mode and also the end of the arcade mode and everything else, uh, depending on who your, who your characters are. Then you end up with this huge matrix of possible things that you can go ahead and unlock. 
en route to that, every time you play through, you win a gold that you can use to go ahead and go toward customizable, customizable things like uh, suits, accessories, and then there's also the picture diorama mode, which has poses and everything else. The thing that, that's happened with SNK Heroines just recently is that um, they, there was an update to it where they added arcade uh, stick uh, support to it. So some of the um, controls... Arcade stick support? Yeah, because some of the controls were mapped to the, actually the right analog, and there is no dual analogs on, our, on an arcade stick. Of right. course not, so, yeah. Yeah, so they went ahead and they mapped... Okay, so if, you, if you're using an arcade stick, these are how you go ahead and you, you, uh, you uh, do those commands that are mapped to a, an analog stick. And the other thing that's, that's, uh, that's happened with it is that... Um, it released its first DLC character, and they also announced their second DLC character earlier this week. Uh, the first DLC character is a character called Thief Arthur, which looks like uh, she's a member of Loveheart's uh, Pirates or maybe a, a rival pirate. She's she's purchasable as a character. She's pure DLC and everything else, but it looks like her customization options aren't as deep as everybody else. They don't give her. She doesn't even have like an alternate uh, suit or anything like that. Hmm. The other character that's shown up that's been announced is uh, Scullo. A gender bent Scullo is actually making a, their way to SNK Heroines, and that was announced out um, where a female version of Scullo is showing up on here. Like if hmm. uh, you see that um, with Fighting Ex Slayer, they actually announced. I think. Uh, I think Terry is actually showing up in, in Fighting EX Lair. Hmm. Uh, so That's SNK and the folks at Arica are doing the crossover thing. Like I said, SNK is like is like friendly. They they don't care. They do not fucking care. They're going to do a crossplay thing with any fucking publisher out there who's willing to go ahead and entertain it. They will lend their fucking characters out. But it looks like the only thing they ask is that, hey, you lend us a character back so that we can use it in one of our fucking games. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what's happening with Scullo and, uh, since Terry is showing up in, uh, in Fighting EX Lair. All right? But, yeah, those two games, as far as the Switch, those are other ones that have continued to play this week. Theme, you're up next. Uh, I played the cousin of this game last week. <laughs> Now, look, love this series, but damn, it was it difficult to beat, especially back in the day. Beat Ghosts and Goblins. Beat Ghouls and Ghosts. Beat this. And wow, oh wow, what I had to go through in order to beat this game for the Super Nintendo. Back in the day, this game has no saves in it on the SNES. On the Game Boy Advance, it does. On the PSP, it does. On the Sega Saturn, the Ghouls and Ghosts generations it does but for the super nintendo it does not therefore i had to go to school and leave my super nintendo on in order to come back in order to freaking continue to play where i left off that was agony until i buckled the fuck down and i beat this in one sitting just like all the other Ghosts and Goblins games or Ghouls and Ghosts games, you have to beat this motherfucker twice in order to actually beat it, and you have to actually have a certain weapon in order to enter the room where Princess Prin Prin was being held. Great game, great soundtrack. Mode 7 was used in the Super Nintendo version of this. Yes, it had a lot of slowdown in it. And this was, at the time, specifically made for the Super Nintendo. But then it went on to PlayStation, it went to Saturn, GBA, PSP, so on. Xbox. You know, yeah, but man, oh man, the memories of this game. And you talk about games being hard now, you need to play this. You need to play this, know the mechanics, and I I hope you don't throw a fucking Super Nintendo controller through your TV or through, through a fucking window, because that's what people did when they were playing this back in the day. Still love it, though. Still a great game, but damn it, was it hard. Gray Mouse, you're up. <laughs> the All problem right, so with that gonna... game, too, is that it didn't give you a choice. Right. It, it, yeah, you get to the end, and it's like, look, motherfucker, you got to go back because 
you have to get a weapon that wasn't even available to you yeah, at the first time round. round. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry about that, Green Mouse. Go ahead, jump in yours. <laughs> no, no. Um, so to stick with my routine or my uh, so far, um, it's another NES game, um, and it's actually a good LGN game. Yes, there are some good LG uh, LGN NES? games. Yes. Yes. This I gotta see. Yes, and it is called Town and Country Surf Designs. Ah, okay. TNC. Better known TNC. as TNC Surf. TNC Designs. Surf. Okay. I don't know how to. Wow, this game is just freaking great. Um, you either have two modes: you surf or you skateboard, and that's pretty much it. It, it says town and country. I, I mean, I guess there's really no country in it. It's more like uh, you're in the town and you're either on the on the surfboard, and those freaking seagulls. Oh no, those birds. Oh, oh my God! God. No, He's knocking ooh. you off your uh, your your knocking you off your surfboard, right? And then um, as you <laughs> have to get then, mine out, and as you play it, you know, uh, especially on the the surfing part and the skateboard part, the the more that you make it to the goal, the further you know along you go, the more longer you're uh, to skate to that goal again. And uh, what's cool is you do the tricks along the way. You hit the ramps. You hit the. You jump over the beach balls. You you ollie you, or ollie ollie um, ollie up on the on the wall. And, and then once you get your uh, your time freeze, and then you can pretty much as long as you don't get hit, you're good to go. And then as the stages get further and further along, I think I got maybe stage twenty, twenty one, twenty two, somewhere around that area. It gets so freaking long that if you make one mistake, if you fall, you get hit by a skateboard or a freaking um, oh, yeah. baseball or, or an oil slick, you're done. There's no way that you would make it to the uh, to the goal. Even if you get, you can't just get time stop again. It just it, it gets really difficult. But yeah, because you have to stop the time and then go to a certain length. Right, you, right. You hit very early, then you're done. You're done. Uh, this is a, a extreme classic. It, it just I I played this for hours and hours and hours, and uh, yeah, TNC Surf Design. If you guys haven't played this, please play it. I wouldn't mind having a uh, a modern version of it, to be honest. Yeah, that that so screams eighties t-shirts, man. I mean, come that, on. that does through the yin and yang symbol with TNC on it. Well, I mean, yeah. look, I mean, look it, it is. It is. I mean, this this is the the, the skateboard 80s. The people wearing bands and and I'm just saying and and uh Converse tennis shoes on your skateboard. And going <laughs> I'm just saying. Excellent yeah. game. Rev, you're next. Yeah. All right. Let's uh let's go ahead and continue on with the games that I continue playing this week. I said the these are particularly games that continued from last few. I'm not going to spend too much time, but uh, Bejeweled, you know, of course, like I said, it's always in my 3DS XL, and it's always the go-to for when, whenever I'm waiting around at the house for, you know, waiting for things, or if I'm spending time on the shitter, you know. Uh, Lightning is the uh, mode of choice for me as far as it goes, um, although I will probably will go out of my way to, to uh, spend some time with uh, either Diamond Mind or, let's see here, I think it's Ice Storm uh, when it comes to it. So, um, but Lightning and Lightning as it is, because that, that's what I can go ahead and I can go ahead and get, get done in like two or three minutes and actually feel like I've played a lot. All right? That's that. <laughs> Theme, you're next, sir. Now, <laughs> ah, this game. You talk about a game that was better than the arcade version, this was it. People say, oh, Soul Calibur, and I'm a big Dreamcast fan, but no, this did it. Contra did it. You play the art. A lot of people didn't even see or play the first arcade version of Contra. Please seek it out or, or emulate it or whatever, and, and, and then put this in, or emulate it or whatever, and see the differences between what the Nintendo did and what the arcade version did. 
it is just no comparison. The Nintendo version, it simplified it as far as graphics, but all around, it was just a better, longer freaking game. It was. It's simple as that. Love comedy in this. And you can't go wrong with this. And fuck that 30 man code. Beat the game without that shit. The power ups, the music, everything was just great about the game. I'm surprised you haven't, uh, you didn't play his, his cousin, Super C. Oh, no. I like that one better. Ah. I, right. That's just my opinion. Oh, Super C is great. Right. But I still like the original Contra better. Right. That's just my opinion. All right. So for my next game, is uh, this actually is a modern game. It's a game that i actually been playing um, a little bit here and a little bit there. Um, I'm talking about uh, Dragon Quest XI. Nice. Um, if you're a Dragon Quest fa- uh, fan or a Dragon Warrior fan, depending on what part of the pond you're on, what yeah. side of the pond you're on, um, again, I I still kind of hold the same opinions that I had before when I was playing this uh, la- uh, last week. It's it, it's all right. I think it's kind of it's cheesy, and it, it's basically a JRPG. I hit you, you you. You, you know, I mean, you could either play I hit you, you hit me, or you could actually, in this game, you could actually move around a little bit on the battlefield. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, the story so far, again, it's been very predictable, which is kind of, I mean, I guess if you play one Dragon Quest game, you pretty much played them all. And that's very unfortunate. You know, there's a couple games, <clears throat> Final Fantasy, that's kind of the same way. You know, you play one boy band game you played them all <laughs> and that's what y'all gotta say anyway so uh rev what's your last game okay last <sighs> game for this week um you know time is short continue play through world of warcraft battle for azeroth i right. think i may actually be enveloped by that uh, vortex of life and time the only upside is that, guess what? I work for the company, and I can play the fucking game while I'm on the clock. So <laughs> uh, last time, I think we were doing everything here. I said that I was uh, a level 25 uh, human ranger. I am currently a level 37 human ranger. Instead of leveling up just one level for the week, I actually played enough time to go ahead and level up 12 levels. And uh, I've actually... Uh, taking my foot off the pedal and I'm not doing any of the quests. I'm uh, playing all of the, the pet quests now, uh, which is kind of funny. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But that's the last one here. And uh, Theme, you're next. If you don't get through this, don't worry about it. What we'll do is that we'll start up another one for I went back to playing this again. Devil Dice. Love the game. I love puzzle games, but there's a specific story between me and Grey Mouse. Now, we were in the Navy, and we're out in town and um, where we were stationed at, Sasebo, Japan. And there was a game store that had the TV and had the – it was a PlayStation, and they had the controllers. And he calls me. He's like, hey, look at this. And I go, and I look at it, and next thing you know, there are devils walking on top of dice. And we're like, what the heck is this? But then – the puzzle mode, if they quote unquote die or you don't complete the puzzle, you run out of steps. Devils go up. <laughs> ah! We were like, wait, devil's going to heaven? What's going on here? But this has a good versus mode. It has an outstanding versus mode. And you will have to, in order to understand or get the game, you will have to play it and, under, and to really understand it. But this and Bombastic for the PS2. If you like puzzle games, especially something that's very unique and that's nothing like anything else, this is one of those games here, and I recommend playing it, and I'm going to try to get to my playthrough video of this when I finally grab and get the time for it. You know, funny thing about that particular game was that when the Net, Net Yerose, the blue PlayStation console, which was actually like the development console that they only released in Japan for mm. folks like fan, like modders and everything to actually go ahead and develop games. I think that is the first and the only game that was actually picked up by a publisher and put out for 
actual commercial release. So, um, yeah, that was actually a, a project that was put together by a, um, an independent uh, oh, really? this, uh, developer. This yeah. THQ. Uh, that's the THQ release is the release that was done here in, in the state. Yeah. Okay. But the original, the original developer and everything was just one guy who had a blue net Yorose, Yorose, and he went ahead and he built the game from scratch. And he went ahead and he submitted it to Sony because uh, they were they went ahead and they released that out and they were looking for for people to go ahead and put basically create homebrew projects to see if that shit would actually sell. I and wish from, that this would be on the PlayStation Classic, but it's one to five players, so that wouldn't be feasible. Which well, because yeah. You know what's funny? Is, no, the, the, the silly thing about that, and I, I don't want to take up too much time before we move on to Grey Mouse, but I wouldn't be surprised if that actually shows up on the Japanese version of the PlayStation Classic and not the American Ooh, version. Ooh, that would upset me. I'll have to import that bitch because I would love to have that. Just you, another thing to get you, pissed you, off you, about. You think they'll make it four to five players at that point? No. Yeah, well, exactly. they'll just keep it to two players, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it shows up on the on the Japanese version, not the American version. But let's right. go on. Uh, Grey Mouse, what do you have left for for what you got there? You know what? Now that you mentioned that, um, it'd be interesting on how the controllers actually fit into the classic. Because if the, if they're standard controllers, I wonder if the multi tap would actually fit in the classic, and then. Mm. That would remedy the the whole five player thing. No, the, the the slots are actually different from the original controllers. We don't yeah. know that. Yeah, we no, do. they're USB. They're, they're USB. USB. Oh, okay. They they have pictures of them. Trust okay. me. Trust right, me. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Anyway, um, so I don't have a physical copy of this game, but I've mentioned it several times before. Um, talk about Guild Wars Two. Uh, my um anti hero of Wow. Mm-hmm. The dirty cousin of WoW. Anyway, um, they like I said uh, a couple weeks ago or last week, um, they just released a patch, and I've been mostly been playing through the the uh, the content of the patch. Um, I'm one of those guys who is not like a um, one of those guys who run through the content, the new content on the first day and then go back to the publisher and say, Hey, I ain't got nothing to do. I like to take, I like to take my time on the new maps and the new things that, you know, new things to do and and take a look around. So yeah, I I just finished the story. So, um, finish, uh, um, I think it's season four. Yeah. Season four, episode four. And, uh, the storyline is getting better and better and better. Uh, I think that, um, uh, NC Soft, or um, that's their parent command, but um, Arianet has actually hit their stride now with the with the uh, the living world is what they call it, and uh, the releases are getting better and better, and the story is getting better and better. I guess it's good that when the when the um, the uh, developer gets. Um, confidence in their in their product, more and more confidence on you know the engine and stuff on how to to do certain things, and it just gets better and better. Again, this this uh, this game is six years old now. Um, it has a predecessor, a predecessor, uh, Guild Wars. That's just why I call it Guild Wars Two. Just saying. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so yeah, so uh, excellent. I, 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 Played that game uh, most. That's most of the game that I played this week was uh, was Guild Wars Two, PC Master Race, all that jive. Okay. Fuck that fanboy boy shit. Last. Let's play Yu-Gi-Oh games. Yeah, let me just jump to the last game uh, for my list. Um, you know, uh, let me get to the point real quick. Um, last game in my list, uh, like I said continue playing World of Warcraft, Battle for Azeroth. Uh, that was the last expansion for it. I think the last time we went ahead and we did this, I said that I was something like a level 25 or 27 Human Ranger. 
Um, currently, I am a level 36 or 37 human rank. So, um, unlike before where I was just leveling up one level per week, I've leveled up like 10 or 12 this week. And it definitely doesn't hurt for the fact that I actually work for the company and I can play the fucking game while I'm on the clock. Um, so, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, yes, I am actually finding out how deep the rabbit hole goes uh, as far as the, the vortex in life and time that is World of Warcraft because I found myself going back to the very beginning any area uh, figuring out, oh, so that's how pet battles work. And now I'm literally playing fucking Pokemon, a version yeah. of Pokemon in fucking World of Warcraft. You know, capturing odd wild animals and battling them against each other in pet battles and training them up and everything else. So, um, look, I'm just not one to, to read a manual at all. And with as deep as the content is for this particular game, uh, the manual would probably be several hundred pages long. So, um, yeah, it was just one of those things that I, I, I just kind of stepped back and I figured it out. But um, I also had to start wearing uh, my my work glasses, which uh, lessen eye fatigue for from staring at, uh, at monitors all day. Um, yeah, because mm. I can also thank this particular game for not only the amount of time that I've spent over on it for the for the last week, but also for the massive fucking headaches that I've I've had over the last few days because I've been staring at monitors for ten plus fucking hours every fucking day. Ouch. So yeah. Um yeah, but that is the last one out of uh, my particular group for what I've done this week. Was there anything else that anybody else had for, for this week? I've been playing Race the Sun, a freaking digital game that's on the PlayStation 4. Play, wait, it's also on the Wii U, if you could have got it digitally on the Wii U. And I think it was for the PS3 as well. But again, you're a solar-powered great, a spacecraft or airplane or whatever, and the sun is going down and you're solar-powered, so you have to keep up with it. You get power-ups that you go fast, so the sun raises up jumping abilities. Um, yeah, the beauty about that game is that it resets every day. So the stages are just different. They'll put clouds in, they'll put different obstacles in. It is a great game, and the sunrise, the zen on that is outstanding. And it's on, so it's on VR. I want to try that on VR one day. There's some games that we want to try on VR one day. That's one of them. What about you, Grey Mouse? Was there any, anything else you wanted to talk about before we wrapped up? And I'm spent. You're spent. <laughs> I think really the only last thing I want to talk about before we wrap up is that um, I'm going to give it another week on Tecmo Secret of the Stars. Um, look, if I was a high school student, again, where the only thing I had to worry about was you know going to school and make it there on time, if I wasn't skipping class or whatnot and my parents didn't know about it. Um, you know, if, if that was the only thing that I was worried about and I didn't have to worry about, you know, going to the nine to five to pay bills and everything else, and keep the lights on, uh, then, um, I, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play through Tecmo Secret of Stars for another week to see how that goes, to see if there's any real compelling developments to go ahead and keep me on the hook for it. Because at the, this moment in time, I am really this close to go ahead and starting up Lufia, which I do have a physical copy of. And if I do start up Lufia, well, then that's what I'm going to be talking about next week. <laughs> um, Great RPG. With that, yeah. With that, that's pretty much all of the games that we've talked about this particular, uh, this particular week, folks. Um, like always, if you have thoughts on these particular games or you have thoughts on our feedback on these particular games, you can let us know. Leave us a comment below. Thumbs up, thumbs down appropriately. Whatever you feel like, like always, no matter what you go ahead and do, we always encourage leaving a comment. And if you really like these particular videos and want to see us continue putting them out, I do suggest that you subscribe to our channels and turn on those notifications. You will know whenever any of us go ahead and put out these videos 
by ourselves or with any of the other Middle East guys, whatever channel you might be on. Uh, with all of that, all of our bullshit on the games that we played this particular week ends right here. I'm the Reverend. The theme here. And I'm Grey Mouse One. Once again, for the benefits of common sense, logic, and gaming. Credits. <laughs>